Hello, everyone, and welcome to our tech and our evergreen social strategies. I'm Susan Harrison, Exit Realty Senior Vice President, Corporate Communications, and I'll be moderating this session. And if you haven't done so already, please type uh, dial into the audio portion of the presentation. And um, if you have any questions throughout the presentation, please type them into the question box and we'll do our best to address them. Today's Techinar is being recorded and we'll send you the link when we're finished. Social media is an important part of your overall marketing and engagement strategy. And it deserves as much attention as the rest of your business, including educating yourself on what your customers expect and how best to deliver it to them. On today's Techinar, Exit Realty's Vice President of Technology Engagement, Annette Anthony, is going to discuss various platforms, identifying and engaging with your audiences, and types of distribution that are right for you. She'll also discuss ideas to inspire content and the ever-important editorial calendar. Annette? Oh, thank you so much, Susan. Welcome, everyone. We're so happy that you're joining us here today. We've got a lot of great content. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and kick off my presentation here. Okay, now, again, thank you so much. But, you know, before we get started, I wanted to make a point to let you know that we're always looking for great talent who might want to be featured in a future one of our techinars. So if you have an effective strategy with tools and resources to engage with clients and prospects, and you might want to join me in a future session, I want to know. So will you please type your name and what, you know, in the chat menu, and of course, let me know what you especially enjoy using in your efforts to connect and generate income and increase your per agent production. Be sure that you include your email address because I am going to reach out to you personally. So take a second before we get started. If you've ever had the desire, maybe on your bucket list, to participate in something like this, um, you do something in your local market that really works well for you, you're using a tool, I'd love to feature you. And, and, and we'll have a great conversation together that you can share what it is that you're currently doing. I think that would be wonderful. I'll follow up with you in the next day or two and, and connect. Now, I also want to remind you to stay on this tech and art to the very end because you never know who's going to make a cameo appearance at our Techinar, so don't miss it. You won't wanna, you'll, you'll, you'll miss out if you do. So let's go ahead and get started on today's session. We're talking about evergreen social strategies. And you know what, whether you're mapping out your social strategies now or later in the year, the timing, I gotta tell you, it's never right, you know, to sit down and to strategize because things always come up. But when you do, you'll always have the advantage when you block out time in your schedule to plan in advance what it is that you want to accomplish with maximum return on your invested time. You may have heard our CEO, Tammy Bunnell, say that most people spend more time planning a vacation than working on their goals, and it's true. And if this is you, you know what? It's okay because there's always time to improve, right? Because today you're going to learn applicable steps to implement social strategies that you can benefit from at any time. Social platforms, you know this, they come and go, and, and we know that they constantly change. And as long as you're focused on why you use them, who you want to attract and engage with when you use them, and what do you want to be known for sharing when you're using these platforms. So you wanna be sure that you're constantly creating a focus, that's gonna definitely get you there. Now this year, I got to tell you, I had the pleasure of being invited to participate in an inaugural mastermind with Katie Lance and only 12 other participants. And if you don't already know who Katie Lance is, she's the CEO of Katie Lance Consulting, specializing in social media strategy and content development. She works with brands and technology and in real estate industries. And over the years, I've gotten to know Katie, and I've learned and applied many of her strategies. And, and that, here's a tip. If you ha aren't already connected with her on social media, definitely do connect. She's well-connected in the industry, and she probably has a lot of connections in common with you already. So be sure that you connect with her. But the mastermind 
that I attended gave me additional tools and tremendous thought process to plan my 2019 year. And there's so many strategies and takeaways that I personally learned that I want to share with you today. Strategies that you can leverage definitely today, tomorrow, next month, next year. So what I've done is I put together five actionable strategies to give you reflection, clarity, consideration, ideas, and most importantly, it's going to give you a special plan. Throughout the presentation today, you're going to see apps and resources that you can apply daily, monthly, and annually to help get you organized. Um, then when I, what I mean by rinse and repeat is you've got to practice these strategies annually, monthly, and daily. So here's what I need you to do. I need you to get a pen. Grab a pen. Make sure you have something to write with because you're going to want to take notes. You see, taking pictures of the slides, it, it just doesn't do our short time together justice. And I've got a lot of little activities that I want you to do along with me, okay? So you're not just looking at slides. I want you to engage with me and do some exercises. Because here's what we know. What you write, right, what you write down, you're more likely to apply. So, so let's get ready. Grab that pen, grab that paper, notepad, and let's get started. We're talking about five strategies, right? So here's the first one. The first one is that you need to clearly understand each platform's purpose, okay? We're gonna do an exercise together. And what I want you to do is I want you to, I, I want you to write the following social media platforms out on a piece of paper, okay? Because we're gonna ask three questions of each of these platforms. Okay, three questions for each platform. So if you don't currently use something I mentioned, listen, just skip it. Okay, don't write it down. We're just focusing on the platforms that you currently have or use. So the first one, write on a piece of paper, your personal Facebook. Okay, your personal Facebook. On the next line, I want you to write down your business page on Facebook. Okay, your business page on Facebook. The next one is going to be your Facebook group your Facebook group. Chances are you, you may have a lot of Facebook groups. So maybe the top three that you focus on if you have several, okay? On the next line, I want you to write your personal Instagram. Then on the next line, your Instagram for your business. Then there's other platforms like YouTube, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Snapchat, and Twitter. Remember, just focus on the ones that you currently have or use, okay? Now, here are the three questions. And these are the th three questions that you need to answer for each of the platforms that you wrote down that you use. Number one, what do you envision, right? Um, the next question is, what does your audience see? And then number three, what changes do you need to make? So let's just review that. So what do you envision? you know what, this is an exercise that you need to do with yourself. And it's how do you see yourself using this platform? Um, think about it. If you were to review the last several posts, does that align with what you envision, right? So that's a simple exercise that you can do. And you need to do this with each of your platforms so that you have that clarity, right, of what it is that you envision. Number two, the next question is, what does your audience see? So you've got to take your goggles off, right? And you've got to put your audience's goggles on and look at your platforms um, objectively and take a look from the perspective of your audience. What do they see? Are they aligned with what it is that you envision, right? And then number three, what changes do you need to make? Because you may recognize that you need to make some small adjustments and that is completely okay. You see, what you definitely need to do, and you need to go through each of your platforms, is you need to answer these questions openly and honestly, okay? This is going to help you reflect on what your, what's your intention for that specific platform. But here's the best part. You're going to like this. There's no right or wrong answer. This is your platform. No one can dictate what it is that you should or shouldn't be doing. Maybe some of the shouldn't, but the should. Um, it's gonna help you move towards using that platform more effectively when you have that clarity. Now let's talk about number two. 
This is a big one because the reason why you're on this platform is, is to have this communication platform to speak to an audience. And at first, you know, social platforms were all about connecting. You know, it mattered more about the quantity for the sheer fact that you could connect with anyone anywhere in the world, right? And as we engaged more, it, it, became, more, it became more apparent that audiences were just that, that you were building audiences of people that, that you hardly knew. Today, though, it's different. We're spending more time pruning from our list of contacts and we're being more intentional about connecting with people we want to connect with. You know this, industry leaders are talking about this all the time. It's all about being more intentional with your audience. It's not the quantity anymore. So we're gonna do another fun exercise, okay, that's gonna help you focus on who you're trying to engage with on social. We'll talk more about the types of distributions and the content ideas in just a minute, but right now, the most important task is to identify your ideal connection. That's who we're speaking to on the social platforms that we're on. We're going to talk about, you know, their needs, their challenges, their values. So here's what you need to do. On a piece of paper, I need you to write, you know, make room for about seven blank lines, okay? Seven blank lines. And on each line, I'd like for you to write the following, all right? So get ready. The first line is going to be male or female. So write down number one, male or female. Number two, age. And it could be an age range, not just one specific age, okay? And we'll go through these in just a second. Number three, family. So number three, family. We're writing seven. Number four, location, okay? So write down number four, location. Number five, challenges challenges. We're going to talk about these in just a second. Number six, goals. Number six is goals. And number seven, values. Okay, number seven is values. All right, now let's add a little bit more detail on each line about your ideal connection on social. So first of all, number one, uh, we identified male or female. Okay, so maybe you said female. Okay, so write down female. Number two, remember, either isn't wrong, okay? There's no right or wrong answer. This is your ideal audience, so you get to choose. Number two is age. Decide what your ideal age range of audience that you want to engage with. Who do you resonate with the most? Age range, okay? Number three, family. We talked about family. So the question here is, does your ideal connection have a family? So Remember, we're just creating this fictitious, um, this fictitious person or audience, right? So, if you've chosen, if you, as you've written down family, does your ideal connection have a family? And the reason why this is important is because if they do have a family, there's going to be some needs that you want to include in your conversation about family, so it resonates with your audience. Number four, we talked about location. So the question here is. Where is your ideal connection? Where do they reside, right? Where do they live? Where do they work? So write down maybe some areas that you resonate with the most, okay? Write down those areas. And then number five, challenges. With this person that we're trying to define, what are some, ch some of their challenges, right? Is it, is it hard for that audience or age range to buy a home? You know, there could be some challenges that that, ideal, you know, person, that ideal audience that you're putting together, you're identifying, what might be some of their challenges? Because you can speak to that when you're communicating on social. Number six is goals. What are some of their goals, right? Do they want to downsize or have they considered purchasing other properties? What are maybe some personal goals? What are some of their goals that you resonate with, that you can have great conversations with on social. And then finally, number seven, right? Their values. Do they value a professional helping them with sound advice, right? Are they trusting? Are they loyal? Remember, we're, we're merely identifying your ideal audience. And once you have an idea of the person or audience that you're trying to engage with, Taking a platform and determining what content to share with them will increase your accuracy because your target will be clearly defined. 
And then going forward, you'll want to connect with that ideal connection, right? Think of your ideal client that you've had recently. Chances are uh, that that ideal client hangs out with people just like them. Well, in Facebook, actually, you can create look-alike look audiences as well. So not only will you engage with people you already enjoy engaging with, but you can also expand your audiences with people in their same likeness too. And doing this exercise annually is, is really important because your ideal audience changes. It evolves. For instance, today you might find that working with millennials is, is your sweet spot, that you love this because they appreciate your real, real world knowledge, right? And your negotiation skills because maybe that's not their strength. Or Maybe it's you working with seniors that you decided, you know what, I've, I'm now starting to work with more seniors and I really resonate with that audience. I'm able to really help them and, you know, address their needs and help their families with all these transitions. People change and so does, so does what it is that you're interested in. So your audience is really important and doing this exercise annually, and we'll talk about a plan, is going to help you define more of your ideal audience. Okay, number three. Social strategy number three is we're going to talk about the most popular options of content distributions, okay? Perhaps not all of these are what you're currently using, and here's what I want you to do. I just want you to have an open mind to potentially add a new one of what we're going to talk about to your list this year ahead, okay? So we're going to go over four popular options of content distributions, but we're also going to talk about the pros and the cons of each. Now, I want you to write down which one you feel you might be willing to commit to, but let's review them first, and then we're going to do a fun poll at the end of this. We're going to figure out what is it that you're going to add in this coming year. So let's talk about Facebook Live. I love Facebook Live. Facebook Live, let's talk about the pros though, okay? The pros, it's so easy, seriously. In the moment, um, it, it, it's immediate. You can engage with your audience. And the only equipment that you need is really your mobile phone. You can use your tablet, you can use uh, your desktop. You do need a good connection though, okay? And it, it definitely has a low barrier to entry. So anybody of any use of any technology knowledge can definitely click on the button, go live, bam, you're there. And what it does is it's gonna give you, it's gonna give your audience a really good sense of who you are and and what you're all about. And you can also repurpose the content on your YouTube or your blog. Now, let's talk about the cons, because yeah, there are some cons. Some people are super uncomfortable with how they look and sound. You guys know you need to get over that, right? Because you're doing yourself a disservice of, of, of limiting your, your ability to, to have people really get to know you, but it takes time, we get that. So there is the challenge of people not being comfortable in front of the camera. And, and honestly, not everyone, okay, wants to watch Facebook Live content. There are people out there that would much rather read, and that's completely okay. So you, those are the pros of Facebook Live and also the cons. Let's talk about podcasts. I'm really interested in podcasts, but let's talk about the pros. Now, you can sit down in one sitting and record numerous podcasts. Podcasts are growing in popularity because it's the content that, that you take in, and, and you could take it on the go. And you don't have to be on camera, so that's a bonus, right? Cons are, listen, there's a learning curve with editing and uploading your content to iTunes or other platforms. And you may also want to consider purchasing higher quality equipment to record and to edit your podcasts. So of the two, okay, there's going to be four, but of the two, we're not going to open the polls just yet. I want you to answer, so which of these appeals to you? Is it going to be Facebook Live or is it going to be podcasts? Now, we're going to look at a couple more, okay? So hang tight. So of the two, which one did you like? Which do you see yourself using more, Facebook Live or podcast? Just write that down on your piece of paper. Let's talk about the other two. So the other two most popular types of content distribution is blogging and video. Let's talk about blogging. Okay, first the pros. Remember, we're going to go through the pros and cons of each. So the pros of blogging is this is, this is awesome for the person who loves to write. And there are great 
platforms that you can use, such as your own website, you can use LinkedIn, you can use Medium. Most blog posts, though, need to be a minimum of 500 to 700 words. For someone who loves to write, they're like, I could do that, you know, in my sleep. So when you write your blogs, you can have an introductory paragraph with subsections and bullet points. You can include a call to action to comment on the blog or reach out to you via your, your email or Facebook page or draw them back to your website. So there's some good options there. Let's talk about the cons. This type of content is the least likely to get shared, and it can take longer to create if you truly don't enjoy writing. It's going to be almost painful, right? And it's also the least engaging type of content. However, some people really love reading content versus watching or listening. Now, you can create a video, which we'll segue into next, and the video, you can actually turn that into a, a video transcription, which can then be turned into a blog. So that's a bonus, right? Now, our last, we're going to talk about video. Uh, again, the pros, like a podcast, you can sit down and you can batch several videos in one sitting. I love this. I do this all the time, and I've gotten better. Um, before, I would just bang out several videos, but then I remembered that it's important you know, for me to change my outfit so that I'm not always wearing the same thing in my videos. So I'm learning. And video is definitely more engaging than any other type of content, and it's really easy to repurpose. Video, like we talked about for Facebook Live, is really the best at giving your audience a sense of who you are and what you're all about. Now the cons, right? Some people are super uncomfortable about being, being, being on video, or they're not sure how to edit video properly. So... And let's not forget that not everybody likes to watch video content. Some would absolutely rather read. Okay, so that's blogging and video. So Susan, let's, let's have a little fun here. Let's go ahead and do a poll. And I want you to do this. Which of the four are you currently maybe you know, not doing and that you are at least entertaining the idea to branch out a little and commit to implementing to your social strategy? So go ahead. Susan, roll out that okay. poll. Let's Thanks, have a Susan. look. So we'll start to uh, <laughs> see some um, some answers coming in. Folks are starting to answer. That's exciting. Oh, ah, well, so how do they help of, help them out, Susan? Help them out, Susan. How do they go ahead and participate in the poll? They just have to click on their screen and choose the one that they want. There you go. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm not surprised at the one that's coming in highest. I'm just going to give it a few more seconds and let more people yeah. answer, and we'll see what the answers are. And I don't think you'll be surprised, Annette. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what's interesting is, is obviously, if we, whatever's picked, I mean, we could do more, we could do more techinars, right, next year about, about how to do more of that, how to, how to be more mm -hmm proficient, more comfortable. So that could be something for coming up in, the, in a new tech and art coming soon. For sure, for sure. So go ahead, guys. I've got a couple more people answering. I'll just give it five more seconds, then we'll close it out, and I'll share the results with everybody. Awesome. Want to answer, go ahead and do so now. All right, here we go. I'm going to close the poll, and I'm going to share it. Cool. So 58% so of respondents chose Facebook Live. That's no surprise there. We have 29% of our respondents chose um, video. 8% are considering podcasting and 5% blog. Nice. <laughs> That's awesome. Great. Okay. I'm going to hide those Wait results now. Carry on, Annette. Thanks, Susan. That's awesome. So thank you guys for, for writing in your, your vote. That's awesome. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to write an affirmation, okay? Here's what you're going to do. You're going to write down, I will add, and then for the 58%, you're going to say Facebook Live to my social strategy. For those who said video, you're going to say, I will add video to my social strategy, those 29%. For those who say podcast, and I'm with you on the podcast. This is something that I'm not doing, but I am very interested in doing it, and I do see the value. So for you and I, we're going to say, I will add podcast to my social strategy. And for the 5% who said blog, go ahead. I will add blogging to my social strategy. Affirmations, right? 
the importance of writing in the present tense. That was fun. Thanks, Susan. So number four, we're going to talk about the, the fourth social strategy here. And that is, um, you know, we talked about the platforms and identifying the ideal person that we wish to engage with. And we talked about content distribution. Now, one of the many reasons people don't stay consistent in their social strategies is because they run out of content or at least they think they do, okay? Remember, content can appear short and to the point like a helpful tip, just like we discussed as a podcast, Facebook Live, or recorded video, with the exception of a blog, right? Because we need 500 to 700 characters minimum, right? And it's about putting down on paper the ideas in advance so that it helps you stay focused. It makes a world of difference. And the ideas turn into added value, and they're going to help you stay consistent. So here are several topics to inspire brainstorming. Let's go through these. So frequently asked questions, seasonal community events. Go ahead and write these down if you have just a second. Um, tips for buyers and sellers, cross-sell agents. This is going to be an interesting one for you. Home improvement tips, behind the scenes, self-improvement. Here's a good one for you too. And industry news. Now here's what we're going to do. We're going to break these down and we're going to talk them through. So take a second, go ahead and write them down. And the objective here is to come up with five ideas for each of these, five. And of course, what you don't finish, right, you can do later, but uh, you better finish them later and as soon as possible. <laughs> so let's start with frequently asked questions. Now there are great, th these are actually great topics to weave into your content. And trust me, if, 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 question, if certain questions get answered, um, leverage them and you can build talking points around them. So look in your email, your voicemails, your text messages, your conversations with your clients. If more than one person asks the same question, others are going to have the same question. And you can always, you know, ask your sphere of influence, right? The people who are closest to you, what might be some of their burning questions when it comes to real estate? What are things that they just don't know? Those are the great frequently asked questions that you can add into your content. The next is seasonal community events. So think about what are events in your community that you attend annually, okay? Um, also, what are events in the local area that your clients should know about? And then what are some of the best events for families not to miss? See, connecting with local community centers um, are a great place for, for you to, you know, leverage information about what's going on in your community that you can add into your calendar. Schools as well, your places of worship, your local chamber of commerce. Listen, they manage calendars and they're a great resource for events in your area. So lean on them. The best part is, is that events, you know, can definitely be added to your calendar so that you don't miss talking about these events monthly or annually. Now on that note, because I'm talking about calendars. We're going to talk more about calendaring all of this so that you're sure to implement. Um, there are also, think about this, educational events that you could talk about, events your partners host about loans, tax repair. There's just so much. There's a lot of great events that you can talk about that you can add into your content. The next one is tips for buyers. Um, gosh, there, tips for buyers are always great, no matter the market especially first-time home buyers. Think about that. Um, you can also discuss the, the benefits of working with a buyer's agent. What's the difference? There is a difference. So you can have a conversation about that. Tips for picking the right buyer's agent. There's a difference. Not all real estate professionals are created equal. Talk about how you know picking the right buyer's agent can make the biggest difference. Also, questions to ask your lender. If there's someone who's never bought a home, there's a lot of questions, and you can definitely help point them in the right direction. Your lender can provide you some great questions, too. Also, what about home warranty? What does it cover? What doesn't it cover? And remember, I want you to think about small, bite-sized information, because that is key. Okay? You don't have to come up with you know, pages and pages of content for that specific title. No. The other is tips for sellers, tips on choosing the right listing agent, because remember, like I said, not all agents are created equal, so helping them choose the right one and when you're delivering the information, so great. Also, three keys to decluttering your home. Those are always great tips. Whether someone is thinking about selling or not, help them with these great tips on how to create more organizations in their home. 
Also, selling a home during the holidays, we're in the midst of holiday season right now. Um, what are some things that they should know? You can share that. Also, top three things to get your home ready for the market. And also, here's another really good one, why staging is important. So these are great conversations, great key points that you could talk about for tips for sellers. Now let's take a look at a few more ideas for content. Cross-sell agents. This is actually one of my favorites. This is a great opportunity for you to demonstrate your leadership. Now, what I'm talking about, because you might be thinking, what? What I'm talking about is take an opportunity to highlight an agent that you worked with in a recent transaction and post how professional they were to work with. Now, you can actually do this in LinkedIn as a recommendation. I know you've worked with some amazing agents this last year. I know you have because you talk about them, how professional they were, how they did more than their share, um, you did more than your share, how they were so, you know, they were um, instrumental in working together to get the deal done. They were helpful. There are so many great people out there. Listen, real estate is highly competitive. You know that. And consumers actually like to see that you play nice with other agents. They do. So it's a great possibility that your clients also are on LinkedIn. They're going to see your recommendation. And when the agent gets your recommendation, they'll have the chance to recommend you as well. So cross-sell agents, this is a great opportunity for you to go into LinkedIn and add a recommendation. I know there's at least three people you work with this year that were deserving of a recommendation. They'll do the same for you too. The next is home improvement. Now, there, you know this, there's more home improvement shows today than we can even consume, right? So give your audience what they crave. And what they crave is unique ideas for storage. You can talk about low maintenance landscaping that beautifies the front of their home. You can talk about smart home technologies and how they're improving the way that we live in our homes. You could talk about top paint colors top trending tiles and floor finishes, um, use stunning images, and you can also leverage text overlay like word swag. You can use unfold or legend. It's going to make your posts absolutely more engaging. And then think about the behind the scenes. Instagram stories are a great way to highlight snippets of your day. Share the work that goes behind you know, marketing the property. Even if it's simple to do, let's say you're creating a marketing flyer, show them the behind the scenes. Show them that you're working hard to market their property. You can also showcase how you're getting the home ready for an open house. Showcasing that you're previewing homes in the neighborhood. Um, and while you're doing that, you may also want to point out some areas of interest for families. Maybe snap a quick picture of you at the local coffee shop in the neighborhood or at the local market picking up some fresh produce. Bring the community to life when engaging, you know, photos of local businesses. And, you know, as a bonus, you may even want to interview some of the local business owners who can talk about the community from their perspective. And you won't be in front of the camera anymore, will you? So that might be more appealing. For self-improvement, again, this is also one of my favorites. I want you to think about all the trainings that you attend throughout the year and be sure that you post that you're constantly learning. You've got a calendar of what events that you're going to be attending and trainings that you're going to be going to. It's really important for you to, you know, post that you're constantly learning, that you can also share a tip or two about what you've learned and, you know, the what you're learning that's going to help deliver a be better service for your buyers and sellers. You can also share with business owners what it is that you're learning. Now, of course, that's going to depend on the subject matter, right? But think about today's session, this one right now. I'm sure there's maybe a tip or two that you can share with your business owners and your social sphere that it's going to help them with their social strategy. I know there is. So that also is content that you can leverage as well when you're thinking about what might I want to share on social. Finally, there's industry news. There's so much here to leverage. Um, let's talk about some ideas for, and resources. Uh, your local MLS, your state board, your national association, your broker owner also is a great resource as well to access a variety of data, such as what? Well, like what's selling in the area and have prices increased or decreased from last year? How many homes have sold in the area compared to last year? And is there an increase or decrease? 
And you can also share your opinion. You know, is it a buyer's market or is it a seller's market? And maybe what's the average days on market? Um, there's a lot of interesting information. And, and of course, anyone can go and look. Anyone who's thinking about buying or selling, they can go access this, this information, right? You can either provide it for them, you know, provide the useful information, or you can send them on their way to, ha to have them find it themselves. Or worse, they're going to stumble into an agent who shares this information because they want to give more value, right? So as a consumer myself, you know, I'd rather have an expert tell me the information and explain to me how is this useful for me. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to finish talking about pulling this all together. Let's talk about strategy number five. And that is, listen, what you schedule gets done versus what you wrote in a notebook and then you put it on a shelf. So we're going to talk about implementing your efforts in a calendar. And there's an annual strategy there's a monthly strategy and a weekly strategy so we're going to what we're going to do is we're going to break these down in really easy steps deep breath okay so we're going to talk about annual planning and this takes place well you know it takes place annually right you know that so for this is really important because this is an your overall master plan of what you envision for your social strategy. And this is an absolutely non-negotiable date with yourself. And it should be no more than a full day, okay? You may not need as much time if you, if you have a team and you're collaborating ideas together, but one day out of the year is absolutely necessary to build the structure of your social strategy. Um, and, and honestly, there's never gonna be a great time to plan it, but you have to put it in your schedule. You have to put it in your calendar and you have to block out that time because you're gonna be higher likely to get it done if you do that. And you wanna also make sure that you create a recurring event so that you can do this around the same time next year, you know, on the, on the time of the year that works the best for you. Because it might not be at the end of the year, it might be more in the summer. You pick it, but keep it consistent once a year. So what you wanna do is you definitely wanna grab a calendar. And you can, you can use an Excel spreadsheet, you can use a pad of paper, you can, you can also print a calendar, actually. If you go to printacalendar.com, it is a great resource for you. It's right there in one of the bullets. Um, it's free, and you can print either an annual calendar or a monthly calendar, which is great. You can also, the purpose of this is you wanna sit down and you wanna brainstorm, okay, at least 75 or 80 topics. For me, I thought, are you kidding me? That's so overwhelming. But here's the idea. You want to ultimately pick 52 topics, which that's one for each week of the year. That's, that's where you want to stay focused. So here's what I did, because I thought, oof, I, that's a lot. Uh, it was overwhelming. So here's what I did. I picked 12 topics. Okay, so it's basically a theme for each month. And then what I did is I picked out four to five content ideas from there for each week so you pick your poison but I, I felt that was easier for me and here's the best part you can move topics uh, you can move them around based on the time of year that it makes the most sense for your audience so depending also on what happens in the future you may want to actually substitute something else that's more relevant to your audience at that time so again there's no right or wrong it's your audience and your content um, there's great platforms that you can also leverage that you can detail all that needs to be done. I'm using the free platform of Trello and I'm really enjoying it so far. Um, I can list my projects and all the things that need to get done within that project. Um, and the free platform is great. Now, if you have a larger team, you have more complex projects, you may wanna upgrade to the subscription and there's also Asana to consider as well. That, that program does it as well. Let's talk about monthly, okay, because having an annual plan in place of content ideas is gonna give you a focus and it's gonna give you less stress on what needs to be done for that month. So each month you need to take out about, you know, I would say block out two to three hours a month so that you can batch your content. Remember, your annual calendar, you're gonna focus on 52 weeks. So, I'm sorry, yeah, 52 weeks. And then within those weeks, you want to think about what's for the, what is the content going to be for each week. So here's what's important. Monthly, you want to take the time where you gather any images, notes for your blog or your video, and you want to create posts to support each week's post for that month. Okay. Notes are great for videos. I love using something small like a sticky note because it's really small. 
so that you're not speaking verbatim. You know, you don't want to read exactly what you're saying. You want to be able to just speak to the, you know, speak to the camera. You've got those few little bullet points that you have as reference. Um, and keep it simple. And there's also some great editing tools for your videos that you can use um, on your desktop. You can also use it on your mobile device. Here's some right here in the, in the third bullet. Now, if you're starting out, any of these platforms are really great to use. But if you're outsourcing, just let the professionals handle it. And then think about this. Once your, your posts are created, you can absolutely use auto posting tools like Sprout Social and Buffer. They can handle all of your social media platforms or later for Instagram. Okay. You can create today and then schedule the, them to go out at a specified time and date that you want, which is great. Now, you just want to remember those dates and the times so that you can watch and respond for comments. That's really important because you don't want to ignore those. Now, let's talk about weekly. Uh, weekly plans, too, are going to help you increase your engagement efforts on social so that you can add this to your social strategy. Let's keep it simple. Okay, let's break down the week by day. And um, it's also going to help give you a track to run on. So, for example, on Monday, let's say you post uh, your content on Facebook on Monday. And then on Tuesday, you tag someone on the post that maybe you feel resonates with your post. Now, don't just randomly tag somebody, okay? When someone gets tagged, they're going to get a, a notification. So they'll see the post. Um, definitely let someone know that you thought of them when you created the post and that you felt that they would benefit from the information. They may like it. They may comment on it. Or they may, de they may even share it. So choose wisely. Um, great, you know, influencers out there like Katie Lance has done this to me. It calls my attention for content that I may have missed. She thought of me and I read it. I liked it. I commented. I've even shared it. So choose wisely. And then on Wednesday, what you could do is you can cross post, meaning you can take the same post and you can share it to Instagram because there you might have a different audience. And some may be the same. But even the people that you have in both accounts, they might not likely remember it. So you can absolutely cross post. On Thursday, you can do a short video about the post that you shared on Monday. You can say, hey, here's a quick video with the post that I shared on Monday. Here's two tips that you could take away today. And just keep the video short and sweet. And then number five, you may want to blog about it. So for those, the 5% who said, we're blogging this year, that's awesome. Um, you can blog about it on your website. On Saturday, what you can do is you can connect with five people and you can find out, you know, what interests them based on what they post about. That's really important. It's not just about what it is that you're sending out and who your audience is, but it's also what is it that they're sending out and can you add to some of the things that they really enjoy into the mix? so that you can connect with them. On Sunday, maybe you post something inspirational and there's a lot of really great graphics that you can use and then you add some text overlay. It's beautiful. Um, Unsplash is fantastic. Pexels and Pixabay, these are great resources for beautiful royalty-free images that you can use, even from your mobile device. You can visit their website and you can get more details about those companies that provide beautiful photos. Now, these are a lot of resources that many I already mentioned, but you can take a picture or again, this is going to be, this is recorded so you can go back and you can check out some of these great resources for the different um, uses. These are going to be great to helping you not only daily, but monthly and annual in your planning and in your creation. Okay, you can take a deep breath now or exhale. All of this, right? It takes time. Now, look at this guy. Isn't he cute? This guy, he started his social media strategy when he was just 35 years old, and he's still waiting for his ROI on his efforts. <laughs> I'm totally kidding, but I was thinking about this picture, and it was cracking me up because it takes time. And you know what? But seriously, you, you can absolutely tangibly watch your metrics to see what works and make sure that you have those metrics handy when you're planning next year. It's going to show you what posts are most engaging, social platforms like Social Sprout, Buffer, uh, Hootsuite, these are great, you know, for this. And you, de you definitely want to watch 
your engagement because notifications are going to advise you when your social community is responding, right? When they're engaging. Here's the thing. If they comment, you have to comment, okay? It's the equivalent of them saying something to you and you saying nothing back. So you want to also reward good actions with good actions. So when they comment, you got to comment right back, okay? Now, I know what you're thinking, that you're, you're like, wait a second, you're, you're probably reaching for a cocktail right now because it's so much information. I, I just want you to know, there, there are many of you that are watching this saying, you know what, what if I just want to sell real estate? This is way too much. Listen, you can outsource most of this, right? There are angels who I call virtual assistants, there's video editors, there's marketing coordinators who live and breathe and love this and they're passionate. So you can definitely outsource this, but fear not, it takes time. And eventually someone's going to say, like most recently I had a friend of mine who said, you know, hey, I've got a friend who's in real estate. Um, she's not really getting any help, but I see what you're doing and, and you're so, you know, you're active with people, you're helping them build their business. And I'm thinking, wow, so you're going to have moments like that where it reminds you that you're doing a great thing. So keep doing that, but it takes time. So Susan, let's go ahead and let's open up for questions, okay? Sure. Um, before we get to the questions, just a couple of things. One of our associates thinks that you used his picture for that image, so that kind of made me laugh. Ah. Thanks for that, Jason. <laughs> and another one, that, and these kind of comments always make me snoopy dance. Thanks so much, Jen, for writing. Thank you so much for all the info and resources. As a brand new agent, this has helped tremendously. And we just love hearing that. Thank you so much. That yeah. was fantastic. Um, another thing before we get into the questions, Annette mentioned when you're identifying your audience, she ask you to take a look at your, the family and age and things like that. Just be careful when you're translating that into your marketing to be aware that in the Fair Housing Act, for example, you can't discriminate uh, based on familial status. So just be careful. It's one thing to plan and to strategize who you're going to target. It's another thing to translate that into a, a property description and things like that. So just be careful. Okay, so off Absolutely. the top of that, you mentioned lookalike audiences. How do I create one? Yes. So Facebook, right? When you're creating an ad, you can definitely, you know, you've got a great, if, if you've identified a great audience and you're resonating with the people in your social circle of Facebook, you can actually create a lookalike audience and, and Facebook will help you do that. And, you know, birds of a feather flock together. So they will create a lookalike audience based on the people that you have in your social circle. So when you're creating your next Facebook ad, do check out lookalike audiences and you'll see how easy it is to create and you can target them specifically. So you're just going to grow your audience exponentially with people that you already are, the types of people that you're, type, that you're already targeting or communicating with. So did we get to the question about um, I post and I'm still not getting engagement. How do I increase engagement? Yes. Okay. That's a great one. So definitely you need to pay attention to, you know, it's not all about you just pushing content. You really need to listen to your audience. Um, you know, if you're still not getting engagement, try, which I've, I've, it's, it's worked on me. It's, I've seen other influencers do it. Why don't you create content that you know will absolutely resonate with an individual? So if they're very inspirational, you might want to tag them on a post and they'll receive a notification that they're on it. And also, if you're reaching people and you're noticing that they're not really engaging with you and you know them, check and see if they're even getting on Facebook or getting on social media. It may just be that they're not on those platforms. So pay attention to, to, to your audience and what they're posting about and if they're even on, because they might, they might be completely missing what it is that you're posting. But try try tagging them on specific posts that would resonate with them because it sends them an alert that you've tagged them on a specific post and who doesn't want to know what it is that they've been tagged on. They're going to check right away. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, I don't know if Kinley mentioned this uh, while my audio had dropped, but one of our attendees wanted to know if we could send out a list of the resources. And what we'll be doing, even one better than that, we'll be sending out a link to the recording of the session um, afterwards so you'll be able to get them all. Um, another of our Good. attendees wants to know about uh, events on Facebook. He's asking specifically, how do you set one up? But I don't think we need, need to really get into that right now. Maybe you can yeah. help him um, out of the, the uh, session. But on a broader sense, how do you find that events engage people? Do you find that that's a, a thing that you set up on a regular basis and do people get engaged that way? Yeah, you know, people love to get together. They really do. 
And it's that quality time, that face-to-face. Um, events are great. And when there's a real good purpose behind that event, it could be a charitable event. That's a great event for people to gather. It's not salesy, right? Because if you say, hey, come to this event, I'm going to sell you on something. Trust me, you will be a lone ranger. But if you want to, if you make it light and enjoyable and here's what you're going to benefit from and here's who's coming, um, people resonate more with that. So events are a great way. And, you know, here's the best thing. When you plan it in your calendar and it's an event, you're going to you're going to work, you know, more diligently because this is something that you can't just ignore. It's not just going to unfold. You're going to want to do some preparation, some planning and build that momentum of excitement that come and participate and here's what else you can find at this event and whoa, we're about to sell out, you know, make sure that you register now. And when people register or they let you know that they're coming, definitely comment or you can call or you can send them an email and just thank them. Hey, we see that you're coming and we're really looking forward to having you. And in addition, Susan, with events, think about this. There are people who do RSVP or they say, yeah, I'm coming, but then they don't actually make it. And oftentimes agents will say, you know what, I'm just not going to forget them, right? That's your biggest mistake. Life happens, and when an event is planned and people intend on coming, but life happens and they don't actually get to make it, it's a really good opportunity for you to follow up and say, you know what, we noticed you weren't there. We're sorry we missed you. Um, Here's what we, you know, maybe if it was a learning event, you can say, hey, I've got like five great tips that you should definitely sit down and have a cup of coffee with me. Um, Let's talk about it the next time we get together. Life happens, so don't ignore the people who don't show up, but events are great. Uh, But just obviously, if it's heavy sales, it's going to be difficult unless it's something that the audience really wants. But um, if it's an event where people are getting together and it's, it's enjoyable, those are always wonderful to have. And it gives you something to always plan for and build a momentum for. For sure. And I love seeing the invitations I get to your open houses. I'm not going to come, but it's fun to see them. (laughs) Yes. Um, Mary wants to know how long videos should be. And you know, the time has just shrunk over the years, hasn't it? Our attention spans are getting so much shorter. How long should people keep their videos? Yeah, you know what? It depends. Oh, first of all, if you're doing Facebook Live, your subject, um, you know, the title of your video of your Facebook Live needs to be catchy because you are competing with people's thumbs, okay? They are thumbing through their news feed uh, continuously. And only if you have a punchy, you know, like, whoa, what is this? You want that thumb stopping title. So important. I did a Facebook Live here from my home um, and the, the, uh, the title was, you know, big announcement we're expecting. And I had thousands of people show up on my Facebook Live and it was short, but the title really caught their attention. So yes, Length of video is important, but the title is super, super important because you want people to stop. And when they watch, you definitely want to make it short. My video here at home was, it wasn't I was pregnant. I wasn't. Um, People were freaking out. But what it was is we were announcing that our daughter was um, engaged and that we are expecting a son-in-law. So punchy titles like that are going to stop people. So a lot of people talk about the length of the video, which is important. Keep it short, maybe depending on the topic. Um, it could be 30 minutes, but if it's an incredible, engaging video, but if it's just quick snippets, keep it maybe a minute to two max. Okay, keep it short and sweet. If people, you can always direct them to maybe your website or you can you know, send them to your blog or send them to other resources where they can get more information or even contact you direct for more. Keep it short. For sure. If we haven't had a chance to get to your question today, we'll uh, take a look at it in the reports afterwards. Thank you so much for participating. Um, And that, Mm -hmm. you know, you've you've mentioned all kinds of ideas for content. What are some other suggestions for content if folks are having trouble coming up with their own? Okay. You know, we, we have a really special person standing by. It's a cameo special appearance. You guys ready? Because I can't think of anything else, someone else better to talk about, you know, some ideas for coming up with additional content than our very own Samantha Morris. She is Exit's marketing project manager. She's also our social media coordinator. Sam, let's get you on the line and let's talk about some ideas for creating content. Please welcome. 
Sam. Hi, Annette. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much. That was so sweet of you. And I'm, I'm super excited to be on this call with you. You know, you've brought so much valuable information and so many great tips to the Exit Nation. Um, and there's so much to work with here um, for now and going into 2019 and, and moving forward. So it's, it's super exciting. And you've covered so much. Um, and, you know, social, like you said, it's all about connecting with people, right? The tech is just the tool. It's just the, the channel or the method and a way in which we can connect with people more often, which is super exciting. Um, there's a couple of things that I found work really, really well in terms of content, you know, just to add to all of the great tips that you've already provided. Um, personal stories, they resonate far. They really do go the distance. I find that when I post, you know, like a photo of a family event or a dinner or even something happening at the office, I get so much engagement, right? It's personal. It's not too personal, but it's just enough to bring people in, to bring in your audience um, and to let them connect with you on a very human level, which is really, especially, I mean, this is a great time of year with the holidays um, to really let people into your life. Uh, you know, it could be at home or at the office, but on a personal level. I find personal stories really, really resonate. Um, and they can sort of be sprinkled through your editorial calendar. It doesn't have to be all the time. It doesn't have to be every personal thing that happens. But I find a little bit of that really humanizes uh, the channel, right? the platform in which that you're communicating with these people and connecting. Um, in lieu with that, um, uh, inspirational quotes. You never know uh, what someone might need to hear or read in the moment, but don't you find, Annette, that sometimes you just put out a positive yeah. quote or, you know, you might be at an event. I know you're always uh, traveling and at different events and different uh, seminars and you're inspired in the moment. You, you share a quote that maybe you've heard or you've come across something in your day that really means something to you and you share it and you get the comments back. I really needed to hear that today. So it's a beautiful way to connect with not only the people within your office, but also all of the people that you're connected to, other businesses, clients, friends, family, just people in general, because at the end of the day, it's still about us as individuals, the humans behind the devices, right? In addition to obviously the business connections and the business that we hope to to create. So that's a really great, uh, great thing to sprinkle in. Um, events at the office, now you touched on that. Again, with the holidays, it's a great opportunity to uh, share the fact that you're having maybe a holiday potluck or that people are getting together and, uh, and, and just spending some quality time. It could be learning. It could be sharing ideas. It could be planning for the following year. Um, it's a great way to share the fact that people within the office are working together because we're, you know, a pretty united company and, and it's all about helping and sharing and growing and learning. So it's a good, it's a good way to, to share that with the outside world and to let the audience in again, sort of what happens within the office and the community that you've built within the office. Success stories is another great way. I think you've touched on that as well, Annette. Um, you know, it could be successful um, closings. It could be agents achieving some sort of level of training. It could be, there's so many different ways to acknowledge others and it could also be other offices or like you said Annette, um, you can commend other agents that you've worked with um, because they were really reputable they did a great job or you know they really followed through and, and were able to deliver so it's a nice way to acknowledge others for um, you know the business that they do or the way they carry themselves because we need a little more of that right we need a little more positive acknowledgement I think mm -hmm. there's a lot of really great things going on Definitely. and so this is a, is a great platform in order to do that um, community work and events uh, really connect the neighborhood and you mentioned and I love this you bring the community to life so social is a great opportunity it's a great platform to be able to share what you might be doing in your community um, and how you know the community is growing or what kind of events are happening and I know that you listed a, a bunch of uh, uh, possibilities and tips for that um, last but not least charitable work that's my favorite and you know with the spirit of exit program we've seen such uh, an enormous amount of offices and agents getting involved in different charities in their local area to give back and this is such a beautiful thing that we um, encourage and we want to celebrate at Exit that our people are really, really interested in giving back. They want to make their communities better. They want to uh, help raise funds and awareness for different organizations. 
and that's something that's really special and I think sets us apart. So um, certainly it's a great thing to share uh, anytime, no matter what the charitable uh, event is, big or small, I think it's important to let people know what you're up to. Um, and again, all of these different types of ways of sharing content will change depending on the platform you choose and again, the audience, which Annette went through in super detail of uh, you know how you speak and share that type of content. So th those are a couple of extras, but you know what? Um, there's so many great uh, ways to share content and so many so many options when it comes to content. I think it's just about starting somewhere. You know, there's not necessarily an order. You definitely want to have that editorial calendar by your side to help you keep organized, but just start somewhere and you'll be amazed at how quickly it evolves into a, a, a very organized plan. So thank you so much, Annette. I really appreciate you bringing thank me on. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sam. We really appreciate that. And to our audience, you know, you've hung on. We typically do about 30 minutes, but you've been on an hour. And we are so grateful that you are with us and that you're listening to all this information. We still have a lot of you online, which is amazing. We just appreciate you. And we're constantly thinking about what are some things that will really help impact your business and to move you forward. Because our number one priority is increasing your per agent production, period. So thank you for allowing us to do that. And remember, if you have a strategy that you love to use, you want to be on here with me, I'd love to feature you. So make sure that you put in the comments your name, your strategy, and your contact information, like your email. And I'll be happy to follow up with you and feature you on an upcoming webinar or techinar. Uh, in closing, remember, try, fail, and adjust. Try, fail, and adjust. Um, any step that you move forward is going to take you towards progress. So thank you again. We are we can't measure how great grateful we are for each and every one of you. And we look forward to seeing you again on another future techinar. So pay attention to our Facebook page, Exit Realty Corp International. That's where we feature our next coming webinar or techinar. We want you to join us. Thank you again, everyone. Watch your emails for a follow-up with the link and the recording of today's video. Make it a great rest of your day. Thank you, everyone.